Scientists agree that birds are dinosaurs, but when did dinosaurs evolve into birds? New digs in Siberia suggest that the presence of feathers, a definite marker of birdliness, has profound roots in the dino evolutionary tree. In fact, dinosaurs may have been wearing feathers from the beginning of their life some 240 million years ago. Stay tuned for additional information on this subject. Without further ado, let's look into the backstory of dinosaurs. Birds were the only dinosaurs to survive a worldwide extinction, approximately 60 six million years ago, most likely caused by a massive asteroid striking Earth. However, the discovery of thousands of early bird and flying dinosaur fossils in the past few decades suggests that feathers were an early evolutionary innovation, even though they most likely evolved for purposes unrelated to powered flight, such as insulation or sexual display. The question of how early has been a topic of dispute, although the most evidence for feathers is found in a group of meat-eating dinosaurs dating back around 150 million years years from which birds seem to have evolved about the same time. Bristly, filamentous structures have also been identified in very distantly related plant-eating dinosaurs. Psittacosaurus, a cousin of the horned dinosaur Triceratops found in Asia and dated to about 120 million years ago, and Tianyulong, unearthed in China and reported in 2009. If these bristly structures were early feathers, as scientists now think, feathers developed in dinosaurs before the 200 million year evolutionary divide between Ceriscians, which include meat-eating species, and Ornithischians, which include plant-eating species. Contrary to common assumption, Ornithischians are not related to Ceriscians, which are birds. There is a near consensus today that the basic bristle-like features in Tianyulong and Psittacosaurus should correlate to the earliest embryonic stage, says Pascal Godfroyd, a paleontologist at the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences in Brussels. However, he and others argue that actual proof for this hypothesis is lacking due to the simplicity of the single filaments observed on these plant eaters compared to the proto feathers revealed on early meat eaters. Moving on, dino fossils in Chitta City. A group of researchers led by geologist Sophia Sinitsa of the Institute of Natural Resources, Ecology, and Cryology in the Russian city of Chitta, which is situated in Russia's Siberian region, discovered dinosaur bones in the surrounding Kulinda Valley in 2010. The fragmentary and poor preservation of the fossils first disappointed the Russian paleontologists who studied them. Sinitsa uncovered further fossils in 2011 and 2012, and she contacted Godfroy, whose research on early birds is well known, as well as other scientists. Godfroy states that we were totally shocked by her discoveries, since the new specimens revealed the kind of complicated, multi-filamented structures that are indicative of protofeathers. Godfroy, Sinitsa, and his colleagues announced the details of six partial skulls and hundreds of bones of Kalindodromius zabecalicus this week. The research was published in the Journal of Science from Kalinda, the specific locality where it was discovered. Dromius, Greek for runner, and zabecalicus from the Zabecal Cry region in which Kalinda Valley resides. The dinosaur that ate plants, K. zabelicus, contains filamentous structures on most of its body, including the head and thorax. However, the more sophisticated feather-like arrangements are largely found on its arms and legs, which is a common pattern among feathers meat-eating dinosaurs. For the first time, we discovered more complicated compound structures, as well as simpler hair-like structures, in a plant-eating dinosaur that really resembles the feathers of feathered dinosaurs, Goodfreud explains. Up next, what do researchers have to say about the first dinosaurs, Galindodromius? Goodfreud and others do not think that early dinosaurs were capable of flying, since academics generally assume that feathers originally evolved for different purposes. Instead, they think that feathers developed for different reasons. The finds, however, suggest that feathers were present in some of the very early dinosaurs and may have been a ubiquitous feature of all dinosaurs. This is shown by the discovery of feathers in dinosaur remains. Colindodromius seals the deal that certain plant-eating dinosaurs had feathers and is the best confirmation yet that feathers weren't something that originated only in the meat-eating dinosaurs, says paleontologist Stephen Broussant of the University of Edinburgh in the United Kingdom. It tells us that feathers must have evolved earlier in dinosaur history than than most of us previously thought, and that the common ancestor of all dinosaurs may have possessed feathers. It implies that feathers must have evolved earlier in dinosaur development than most of us previously believed. The results are a fantastic discovery. According to paleontologist Zing Su of the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing, he cautions, however, that the fossils are still too fragmented to provide conclusive evidence that the more complex feathery structures genuinely correlate to those 
those discovered later in birds. Zhu, on the other hand, believes that the massive quantity of bones, which seem to span a range of ages, from juveniles to adults, give significant new insight on the stages of feather development that happened as dinosaurs grew up. It's possible that humans are not able to withstand as much heat as scientists previously believed. In Portugal and Spain, about 2,000 people are murdered by intense heat and fire. High temperature records were broken from England to Japan. Evenings are cool. The summer of 2022 will be hot. Scientists are striving to better understand people's heat tolerance as temperatures increase due to climate change. According to a new study, people's heat tolerance is lower than previously assumed. If the predictions are correct, millions more people might die from dangerous temperatures sooner. According to Vivek Shandas of Portland State University in Oregon, bodies may respond over time to temperature changes. Shandas contends that humans have been exposed to geological and climactic changes. These changes are happening quicker now. Heat waves have ravaged numerous nations by mid-2022. The heat of southern Asia came early. Warda, India, saw temperatures of 45 degrees Celsius, 113 degrees Fahrenheit in March, while Nawabsha, Pakistan, had temperatures of 49.5 degrees Celsius, 121.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Rising temperatures in June and July exacerbated dryness and fueled wildfires throughout Europe. On July 19th, the UK recorded its maximum temperature of 40.3 Celsius at Konigsberg. The heat in France fueled the flames, causing hundreds to flee. Continued, the highest temperature ever recorded in Japan was 40.2 Celsius in June, the worst heat wave since 1875. In July, cities ranging from Shanghai to Chengdu endured heat waves with temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius. Throughout June and July, heat waves struck the Midwest, South and West. North Platte, Nebraska, and Phoenix, Arizona both reached 42 degrees Celsius. According to experts, human-caused climate change will worsen heat waves. SN 724-19 Extreme heat exposure rose globally between 1983 and 2016, notably in South Asia. Up next, what do scientists presume about humans staying cool? The body has numerous processes in place to eliminate excess heat and keep the core temperature at 37 degrees Celsius, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The faster pulse allows heat to reach the skin more quickly, SN4318. Heat is removed from the skin by moving air over it. Sweat aids in evaporating cooling. Heat tolerance in humans is limited. The heat stress limit in 2010 was 35 degrees Celsius. The humidity and temperature of wet bulb air are affected by humidity. These numbers indicate that a location might create a wet bulb temperature of 35 degrees Celsius in a variety of ways, such as with temperature and 100% humidity or 46 degrees Celsius and 50% humidity. Evaporative cooling is a mistake. When skin or other surfaces evaporate, they cool for a brief period. During ephemeral cooling, wet bulb temperature is lower than air temperature in drier areas. Wet and dry bulb temperatures are the same because sweat does not dissipate quickly in humid settings. According to Penn State climate scientist Daniel Vecchelio, wet bulb temperatures assess how much evaporative cooling is possible. Because both hot, dry, and warm humid conditions may be harmful, the body contains a variety of cooling systems. Humans sweat to cool themselves when it's hot and dry, he says. In warm, humid conditions, the body cannot sweat as efficiently when the air temperature is cooler than the skin temperature. Cooler skin aids in the removal of heat. Finally, scientists revived dead spiders to create robots. Scientists have practically resurrected dead spiders to carry out their orders. Researchers transformed the carcasses of wolf spiders into grippers that can move items in a new discipline known as necrobotics. All the team had to do was insert a needle into the rear of a dead spider and superglue it in place. The researchers write in advanced science on July 25th that pushing fluid into and out of the corpse caused its legs to clamp up and close. According to Fei Yap, a mechanical engineer at Rice University in Houston, the concept came from a simple query. When spiders die, they coil up. Spiders are hydraulic machinery, as the name implies. They regulate the length of their legs by pumping blood into them. Because a deceased spider's blood pressure has dropped, its legs coil up. We were simply thinking how fantastic it was, Yap explains. We wanted to capitalize on it. Her team originally attempted to enlarge dead wolf spiders by placing them in a double boiler, expecting that the damp heat would cause the spiders to expand and force their legs outward. That didn't work either. When the researchers injected fluid directly into the body of a spider, they discovered that they could control its grasp effectively enough to pluck wires from a circuit board and pick up other dead spiders. Spiders. The necrobots began to dehydrate and exhibit indications of wear only after hundreds of times.
times of using them. Well, that marks the end of our video today. We hope you liked the video. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.